everyone. This is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Uh, the offseason in full swing. Coaches being ready to be interviewed. The Giants making that big plunge again. It's it's interesting and it's going to be a fun, interesting year. Um, or offseason, I should say. But uh, what I wanted to do starting today, and it's going to make it a little bit more difficult, let's do a three-part series uh, about the Giants roster. We're going to start off today's episode with our free agents, who I personally think we should sign or release. Uh, the next episode is going to be uh, cap casualties, who potentially can be on the bubble and who could save us cap space and move us forward to having more cap room itself. And we'll also go into the cap. And the third will be, as we get more into the playoffs and some other teams get eliminated, who are potential free agents that the Giants can bring in? So let's start with our own free agents. Now, the difficulty with this video is, or is um, we don't have a coach. So since we don't have a coach, we don't have a scheme. And since we don't have a scheme, we're not 100% sure what players will fit into where. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the bigger free agents on our list and see personally what we feel um, if they'll be a good fit on any system or just be a good fit for the Giants team in general in reference to the cap. Because we are going to have a very large cap amount this year because we're losing all that. We had about 30-something million in dead cap space last year, which was a record. That's because of the JPP trade, the um, uh, Vernon trade, the OBJ trade. So we had a lot of dead cap space. So we're going to get all that cap space back. So Let's take a look at our roster now. Who should we start with? You know what? Let's start with the big name on the roster that probably is one of the most controversial, and that's going to be Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams, you know, number six draft choice of the New York Jets comes over almost midseason, and honestly, you either love him or you hate him. I am a Leonard Williams quasi-fan. I think for what he does, first of all, he's extremely durable. I mean, he's he's played in 79 games. I mean, he's been active. I should rephrase that for 79 games and has played in 79 games. So to me that, he you know, he show, shows his durability. He is a listed as a defensive end. You know, he is 20. I think he'll be 26 years old next year. In a 4-3 or a 3-4 system, Leonard Williams is interesting. Leonard Williams in a 3-4 is, we, you know, we, we've gone into the videos that we really didn't play a 3-4 last year. We played more of a hybrid 3-4. We, we played a lot of 5-2. We played a lot of different fronts. Um, but if we go into a traditional 4-3 um, with Leonard Williams, he would be listed, of course, as a defensive end. Now, my problem with Leonard Williams is, yes, he does improve the defense, the run defense sub. Everyone sits there and goes, well, his run defense is so incredible and this, and he improved it so much. But if you actually do a statistical breakdown of what he has offered to the run defense, it's only three yard. We're only three yards less a game that with Leonard Williams on the field. And we went from giving up 0.4 yards a carry to 3.7. So we're talking about a three-yard per game difference for Leonard Williams. And Leonard Williams, the problem from his defensive end position, is not going to provide the pass rush. Yes, he is going to get the quarterback pressures or the almost sacks, the statistic that we would love to create. He will get that. Um, but he's not. as your defensive end in a 4-3, you need an edge that is going to get to the quarterback. You can't have .5 sack. <laughs> You can't have a half a sack in a 16-game season or a 15-game season. You can't. I mean, that's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Uh, especially from that position. He does offer, you know, he did have 46 tackles, 20, uh, 21 solo, and 25 assists. So that, again, my problem with is if we're going to a 4-3, he is not an OC. He is not a stray hand. He's not a tuck. He's not even a Kiwanuka who all could play the run extremely well on the outside and generate some sort of pass rush. So statistically speaking, his market value is going to be, he thinks his market value is probably higher than it is. You know, I'm probably looking at him as, you know, maybe an $8 million a year player, you know, 
possibly. He probably wants a hell of a lot more than that. He probably wants into the 14 to $16 million range. But you know what? He's not He's not Aaron Donald. You know, he, he, he's, he's not any of these other elite ends. Um, can he help the rush? Yes, he can. Can he help the run? Yes. But is he going to be worth more than $8 million a year? In my mind, no. He's not going to be worth more than $8 million a year. Right now, I think even a pro football focus, he was ranked the 42nd ranked defensive end. So, again, that to me is not – that's not the big bucks. You know I mean, that's not something we want to spend $12, $14, 15000000 million. If we could bring him back as an edge for maybe an $8 million a year contract, you know, maybe at a 40, you know, five years, 41 million, maybe we guarantee 23. I don't have a problem with that. I would, I would love to bring Leonard Williams back on that type of, on that type of deal, but I think he's going to hit the open market and look for something else. And honestly, I, it's difficult to say because teams that are, teams that are lacking in the edge, May look at Leonard Williams and say, you know what, you know, we'll we'll pay on the 14, 15 million. But like I said, if we can bring him back at a cap friendly, maybe five years, 41 million, 40 million, then you know what? Then I'm down with then I'm down with Leonard Williams. I'm down with that. Now the next person uh, player we're gonna go into is Marcus Golden. Marcus Golden came over, of course, you know, from Arizona. He got his 10 sacks, you know, this this year. I mean, um, you know, he played a full 16 games, 10 sacks, 72 tackles. <sighs> the problem with Marcus, he is a definitely an end. He's 28 years old. He's, he's in his fourth or fifth year. He, he played almost 900-something snaps, and, you know, he played 82% of the snaps last year. <sighs> is he stout enough to hold the end if we have someone like Marcus Gold on the other end, you know, that that's the question. But, you know, listed as an outside linebacker, most of his sacks were from the down lineman position. So I, I, I am going to call him a hybrid outside linebacker end. Do I think that he is worth bringing back? Yes. 100% I believe Marcus Golden is worth bringing back. My only concern is, is he going to be worth coming back without Belcher? Uh, I'm sorry, Belcher. Betcher. Betcher's gone. And I, he always makes me want to belch. That's why I always call him Belcher. Uh, but Betcher is gone. Uh, so is, is he a, is he a, a, a tackling machine on a bad defense where somebody has to get the sacks because of Betcher's system? Or is he going to be that player we need? He came over to us on a, a uh, pretty cap friendly contract one year 3.7 million uh he was a 4.7 million cap hit um you know he got a workout bonus for 25,000 he got a miscellaneous sack bonus for a million he got a roster bonus he got a base salary 975 he got a roster bonus of 2.7 million so he came over you know as a total target uh 4.7 million now he again is another player that's interesting do we look at him and go, you know what? Maybe we need to bring him back. I would like to see, now he might not do it, but I would definitely like to bring him back. But I would kind of like to see him bring it back as on a prove it deal again. He kind of had a prove it deal and he proved it, but you know what? Do it two years in a row. I would don't mind giving him another one year contract, maybe, maybe taking it up to six million. Like I said, he had a guaranteed roster bonus of 2.2 million, he had another roster bonus of 1.2. Um, he had an average per game bonus of 93 K and he had a workout bonus 25. You know what? If we could bring him back on another deal, he'll be 29 years old. Maybe give him, you know, get him up towards a $6 million range. Even if we give him a two year deal at 12 million, give him some more bonuses, give him some more incentives, give him another million dollar sack bonus, you know, and then rework the deal in year two, if we have to, or make it voidable so we can re-sign him. I'm down with that. I am down with bringing Marcus Marcus back. Um, but like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to come back because we don't know what the coaching philosophy is going to be, which is where we're going to kind of fall. But do we want to bring him back? I say we bring him back on a two-year, $12 million deal laden with incentives. So that's that's a, that's a that would be our... our our Marcus Golden. One other interesting player I wanted to talk about is David Mayo. 
ever, you either love David Mayo or you hate David Mayo. David Mayo is the inside linebacker who came over from Carolina. Statistically, Mr. Mayo had, you know, he's, I think he's going to be 27 next year. He, he played all 16 games. He was actually on the field for only about 600 snaps, which is about half the snack. I'm about, I think it was 50, 50, 56 percent of the sacks. He did have 82 tackles, 52 solo, 30 assists, and two sacks. The problem with Mayo is Mayo, before he came over to the Giants, pretty much, you know, he was what he was. I mean, he he was only really on the field, I think, something like 20% of the snaps on the four years he was over in Carolina. And before his giant year, he was he had his you know his big years were seventeen and sixteen where he had eighteen tackles. So, my th- first of all, he only played less than half the snaps. Second of all, he is a liability in pass coverage. I mean, most of our linebackers are, but himself and Ogletree are very much liabilities in pass coverage. We saw the tight end. I mean, how many times are you gonna run a tight end slant? Are you gonna are you gonna run a fly and no one picks him up? Um, but can he make the play? Here's my thing with here's my thing with Mayo. To me, he is a two down player, and, and that's really t- that's what he is to me. He is a two down player. You know, he came over again on a cap friendly deal, cap friendly deal, which was a one year contract, eight hundred thousand. Uh, really, no incentives. Um, you know, actually, no. I, I should rephrase that. He did get a roster bonus for two hundred fifty thousand, so he made a million one. Um, so, w- which is which is interesting because you know his his contract coming in before that was pretty much about the same. He was a good special teams player for Gettleman. He is a Gettleman guy. Um, my thing is, Mayo is a good third or fourth linebacker on a good team. On a bad team, he is an 82 tackle guy. That's just the way it is because he's playing 56% of the snaps. Um, he's around the ball a lot, which is fantastic for someone that in the inside linebacker position. Like I said, he is a liability in the pass coverage. Um, but do we want to bring him back? Right now, in my mind, Ryan Connolly's still out with the injury. We really, you know, in the inside linebacker position, I, I don't know if Ogletree's going to be around, but that's going to be something we're going to look at in a little ways down the road. Should we bring him back? I think if we bring him back, it will have to be, again, on a cap-friendly deal. Uh, I don't see, you know what? I would give him another two, I would give him a two year deal, deal with only the first year guaranteed, probably for about two and a half million, another million something roster bonus. So if we could bring him back on like maybe a two year, $7 million deal with only the first year guaranteed, and he could prove that he can be consistent. Cause you got to remember, he played four years in Carolina, you know, and, and basically had, you know, 50 tackles. You know, he had 82 in one year with the Giants. You know, he had a lot. He had two really good games, and he had some really bad games. So, you know, you you kind of look at him and go, okay, before the Giant game, we have almost a we had almost a 48 game sample of what Mayo was in Carolina, and he is what he is. He's a great special teams player and a good fill-in linebacker. But you know what? Like I said, on a bad team, he is somebody that you know. He is somebody that, um, you know, that we're there to make the tackles. But, yes, if we could bring him back, like I said, two years, $7 million, bring in the first year guaranteed, second year not guaranteed, yes, let's bring back David Mayo. Let, let's, let's move forward with the Mayo. Let's put the Mayo on top of the bread and see if we get some meat in there and see what else happens. Now, one of the other people we need to look at is Mike Remmers, the right tackle. Mike Remmers. Mike Remmers again came over basically on a one-year deal of two and a half million dollars. Um, you know he undra- he was an undrafted free agent in 2012 with the Broncos. I-, I think you know what he did not have a great season, but he did not have a bad. All in all, the line did not have a bad season, but they did not have a great season. Is he a player that I think if we bring back, he will offer 
something to the team. Yes, I, I think definitely he will come back and he can he can he can make something out of the team. Now the problem is again, he's a Shermer guy. You know, he came over from Minnesota. He had two good years in Minnesota, so you know, but and he had a cap hit of over. Let's see, he had a cap hit of over seven million and six, seventeen, four million and eighteen. So he, while he is not a road paver, or you know, but you know what, he is a more than a serviceable right tackle. The problem is right tackles in this league, as you know, you know, he, he's not a left tackle, but right tackles aren't aren't readily available. I mean, they're not sitting there going, you know. You know, he, he's the best right tackle. He, is he the best right tackle in the league? No, but you know what? He's more than serviceable. My problem is he played well. He played 14 games. You know, he, he was pretty um, consistent going back into Carolina and Minnesota. Because, again, you got to remember, he was over from Carolina. Another, another not only a Shermer guy, but also a Gettleman guy. You know, he, he when he was in Carolina, he, he did, you know, he, he, he did start every game. So... You know, he started 14 games with us, uh, and he was on the field for 81, 81% of the snaps. I to For continuity in the line, I would like to bring Mike Remmers back. Yes, I want, Rem, I want Remmers back, but he is 30 years old. He is going to be 31 and going on the wrong side of his career. I think he is probably worth more of his 2018 salary, which was four million, and not his 17 salary, which was 7.5. So I'm saying if we could bring him back on a one-year deal for four and a half million, I say we bring him back. Four and a half million, and we'll we'll throw in some incentives. Let's build the continuity on the line. Let's bring Remmers back one year, four million a year. For that for that one year, and I think that would be I think that would be a contract he would like to look at. I think that's a contract that um, you know that's that we that he could really grab a hold on to. Now, really, if you look at our rest of our un, unrestricted free agents, because right now this episode we're only doing unrestricted free agents. Eli Manning, of course, is not coming back at his twenty one million cap hit, so we're going he's going to be gone. Michael Thomas, free safety. We have too much young talent in the secondary. So we're looking at he had a $2 million average cap hit last year. If we can bring him back on a friendly deal, I would take it. If not, we could let him go. Then we look at uh, uh, Latimer and Shepard, the receivers. I say we just drop them, get rid of them. We all know Zach, Di- Zach Diossi is gone. Antonio Hamilton. Antonio Hamilton. Listen, you know what with Antonio Hamilton? We should just leave him on the highway somewhere. He had those two horrendous games in the beginning of the season. I've never seen a cornerback not be able to cover anybody. I mean, I thought, what's his name? I I, I thought Baker was bad at points and times, but Hamilton made Baker look like an all-pro. Uh, good special teams player. If he comes back on a cat-friendly deal, I could see that as long as he was on our special teams. But beyond that, dump, dump, dump. Allen, the running back, we picked up late in the season. You know what? Let's cut him. Simonson, you know what? Tight end, cut him. Tanny, Tanny, they may bring back on a cap friendly deal. He was at seven hundred. He was at seven hundred seventy five thousand. But you know what? He's not. Uh, he's not the answer as the backup. Let's draft somebody. Let's just cut him. Corey Coleman. Let's cut him. Cody Core. Cody Core, good special teams player. If he comes back as a special teams player and maybe learns to return some punts, we keep him at a six hundred thousand dollar year salary. I say we keep him. So really, that is a breakdown of the New York Giants free agents that we have coming up, unrestricted free agents. Um, I, I, like I said, this is just our opinion. Our problem is we do not un- know who the coach is going to be yet. So we don't know the coaching staff. We don't know how that is going to shake out in the future because we don't know what system they're going to ring, they're going to run, and what coordinator they're going to bring in on defense. I am a little, I am a little upset that. Uh, Washington has gone with Ron Rivera and now has brought in Jack Del Rio. So that is going to be interesting. So, um, but that's who the people that we think Gellman should bring back. This is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And like I said, episode two will be who are the cap casualties or potential cap casualties of the New York Giants. Uh, again, thank you for listening and go Big Blue. <laughs>